Onia Nechiawu. Right, so we are continuing from where we left off the other time. If you haven't seen our previous um, episode, I suggest you go back, watch that before you come to the present one. But for those of you who have seen um, that episode, just to remind you of the context that we are dealing with, a man goes into the bush to commit suicide. And then another man is walking by and then sees a shirt lying on the floor, obviously belonging to the man who is just about to commit suicide. So this man picks up the shirt, but then the man who is about to commit suicide is questioning this man where he is taking his shirt. So in our previous episode, we broke down the dialogue up to this point, and today we are continuing from there. My wife trusts me, so I'm crucifying myself. Nobody kills. Oh, <laughs> So Santo asks Judas. As he say, in our previous episode, we said "si say" means now. So oh yeah, dear si say, what are you doing now? But if you add "ya" as in "ye ara" to this. You get say say ya, and that means right now. And it says dear na woyo. In our previous episode, we identified dear as a question word, which is what. We also identified two other question words. We had saying as how, and then we had a he or he as where. Okay, so you know we have three question words from this uh, dialogue. It says dear na woyo. What are you doing? The your at the end is your verb to do. Okay? And this is the same as ye. Okay? So you can say ye to do or your to do. So any of these two, they mean to do. So, and in our last episode, I told you that if you put re before a chief verb, you get the progressive form of that verb, as in the ing version of that verb. So, ye or yo is to do. You put re before that you get to be doing. So, we have de na wo yo. What is it that you are doing? Okay? But, right now, what are you doing? And then, Judas comes in and says, Me yiri e ja me ya 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 me ye mo huye nye ye. Me yiri e ja me ya ya ya. In our previous episode, we said the verb jai literally means to stop but when you apply it in the context of relationships it's to break up with someone or to leave someone to divorce someone okay so we have me yere yere is a wife okay yere or or yere is a wife mind you note the difference between this yere and then yera Yira means to disappear, to vanish. And then we have Yiri. Yiri, and that is to flood. So Yiri, Yira, Yiri. And then we have Yari, which is to fall sick. All right? So if I say Meyari, it means I'm sick. But Meyari is my wife. So he says, Meyari, eja, meyaya, ya. My wife has left me painfully. Ya, ya, ya is painfully, right? So me yere eja me ya 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 ah me ye me hu shia enye yi. I told you in our previous episode that me hu is myself, the reflexive pronoun. 
right? So we have mehu, myself, wuhu, yourself, yehu, ourselves, muhu, yourselves, right? Wuhu, themselves, and all those. So me ye mehu shia enye ye. I have also mentioned that she is nothing, but depending on where it is used, it can also be anything. So he says, Meyiri eja me ya ya ya. Meyye me hushia enye yi. Enye yi means it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. Literally, this means it doesn't go well. So from a literal angle, he's saying that my wife has left me so painfully that nothing I do about myself goes well as it works right but he's basically just saying that my wife has left me so painfully that i can't stand it so we talked about mpofrim in our previous episode we said mpofrim is sudden right something that happens suddenly with jamming mpofrim she has left me Suddenly, you remember this saying, right? <laughs> From our previous episode, we talked about this saying. We said, Ferrie is literally shyness, but in this context, it's used as shame, right? And then we said, Enimguasie is embarrassment. Ferrie ne enimguasie die. For shame and embarrassment, can you continue with that saying? So usually in Ghana, when you start a saying, a saying that most people know, when you start it, your addressee will join in to help you complete it, right? And that is what is happening here. The moment he said, Santo joins in and says, In our previous episode, we said, is death, coming from the verb, Woo, which is to die. And I told you that if you put fengina before something, you are saying better that particular thing, right? As in, in this case, ferie ne enguasie die. For shame and embarrassment, fengina mo wu, I'm better off choosing death. Enuntina wo she akonfono. We have a freezer verb here, which is she a comfo and she a comfo means to hang oneself okay when you hang yourself we say oh she a comfo so by way of a sentence example we can say papa no she ne hu a comfo papa no she ne hu a comfo the man hanged himself so judas responds to this with enuntina mi kumi hono so instead of she a comfo to hang he is using the verb kum or kum, which is to kill. Okay, to kill. So we have enuntina mi kum mehono. I told you mehon is myself. So he's agreeing with Santo and saying, well, yes, that is the reason why I'm killing myself. So Santo comes in and says, erade in First, we have erade, which is again another name that. People refer to God with, okay? So we have Erade as God. There are so many names that people refer to God by. There is Onyankopong. There is Erade. There is Onyame. There is Yehua. And on and on. So here, he says Erade in Shira Somao. The verb here is Shira. Shira and Shira means to bless. So, if I'm saying God bless you, I'll say Erade in Shrao. Erade in Shrao. Now, the M in front of Shira is your imperative marker. This is what we use to issue commands and orders and instructions. I am asking God to bless you. So I put the M before that. So basically, this is what you translate in English as should. Okay, so Erade in Shrao. God should bless you. That should, that imperative, is what you have in front of the shira. So in this case, Santo is saying, Erade in shira so mau. What you have said, God should bless it for you. Na 
krata yin sue. Now we have krata and krata is a piece of paper. The plural is nkrata papers. For the full book, if it's a book, that is nguma. Nguma. So we have nakrata yin sue. I told you in our previous episode that yi is the determiner this. Okay? So krata yi, this paper. And you should know by now that for us, we put the determiner after the noun that it modifies, not before, like you do in English. Okay? So in English, you say this paper, what we have in Chi will translate back into English as paper this. Okay? Krate yi. So it says, Krate yin sue. How about this paper? Right? What about this paper? So Santos saw a piece of paper lying on the floor as well. So it's like, okay, so. What is it with this paper? And then Judas comes in and says, in Samansia, Again, in our previous episode, we identified in Samansia as a person's will. Right? We even broke it down. We said it's coming from some mind, the ghost, and say to say. So what the ghost says. So it says, in Samansia, That is the will that I have written and put there. We said tre means to write. So Santo says, ah, ah, a tre se. A tre se means it means that. So you have tre, which is to me. Right? That's one of the, the, the meanings of tre. Tre can also mean to show. Tre can mean to teach. Okay? So I will say, me tre chi. I teach chi. Right? And then I can also ask you to show me a place. So I'll say, Tre me ahim fieho, for example. But we also have tre, which means to mean. Okay? So I can ask you, Oh, Patre say, what are you trying to mean? So Santo is like, Ah, a tre se. So that means that. And then Judas completes what Santo has started. Right? So it means that. And then Judas is like, Ubiya obeba betono. So again, we looked at this in our previous episode. We said the kodie is literally the single thing, the specific thing. And then we identified poti as exact. So the kodie poti is the exact thing, literally. But in this context, it's used as the exact reason. So, obia obebabe tono, the one who will come and meet it, like find this well. Na we hundi kudia potia, then the person will see or know the particular reason, the exact reason for which me will that I'm dying. My wife trusts me, so I'm crucifying myself. Nobody kills. When Santo is done reading, he asks, Now we have brofu, which is English, the language, English, brofu. The white person, we call the white person bruni or obruni, okay? But the language is brofu, English, or potokasa. Potokasa, kasa is language. Poto. When we say poto, poto is a verb that means to mash. Like when you mash something. Say you have the the Edenware bowl. You don't have it. That Edenware bowl that we grind um, pepper in, right? If you put stuff in and then you mash it, we say o oh, poto, right? O oh, poto. So you see how that is like o oh, poto. I hear the history behind Potokasa comes from that. The fact that when the white person came, his language sounded so strange to, you know, the local ear. It sounded like it's like a mush of different things together. It sounded very strange. So they called it Potokasa, the language that is all over the place. Okay. That's what I hear, but I don't know how true that is. But Brofo is English or Potokasa. Okay. So we have, oh, bro, no, no. is that your English? And then Judah says, yeah, bro, no, no. that's my English. So Santo concludes, he says, oh, bro, no, no. 
your English is also not good. So on top of this stupid thing that you're about to do, you also have a bad English. Ufata, uwo. We already know what uwo is, right? Uwo means death, coming from the verb wu to die. Fata is a verb that means to suit, to suit someone, as in to befit someone. So, for example, if you put on a shirt or a dress and I think it looks good on you, I can say, hey, fata di fata wu. Fata di fata wu. But the verb fata can also mean to deserve. I guess they have the same core meaning, right? To deserve. So there's a song by Dada KD titled Fatia Fata Nkrumah. Fatia was the wife of our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So when you hear Fatia Fata Nkrumah, it basically means Fatia um, suits Nkrumah as in they deserve each other. They look good together. So here, fata is used as to deserve. So ufata uwu, you deserve death. Eh, but it's very dear. Nya dia ding. Ni baby here mo. I said if I uwu aro. Ampa. Tima bampa ya mau. You. Aba do swa ki me uwa. You. When your baby papa tra wa. Aba ni say dia. If it has come to this, so this is an if clause. I told you that if you put a statement, if you put something between se and a, you have if that particular statement that you put in between there. So if I go will be se me kwa. If I come, se me ba. But then I told you that we are able to drop the initial se and maintain just the a at the end and it will still be an if clause. And that is what is happening here. So we have Abani say dia if it has come to this dia edding. Let's focus on the edding part at the end. Edding ding literally means hard, something that is hard. So I can say samina no edding. Samina no edding. The soap is hard. Okay. But this same day. We also apply that meaning to something being difficult. Okay, so if I say abrabumu a day, it means life is hard, as in it's difficult. So if I say a day, depending on the context within which I use this, it can mean it's hard, as in literally hard, right? Or it's difficult. And pay attention to how I pronounce this. I say a day. Edding, even though it is written here as a yet ding. In regular speech, we tend not to say this as a yet ding. You mostly hear a ding. And it's not just with this particular expression. So we have a ding. It's hard or it's, you know, difficult. We have a fit. It's beautiful. We have a de. It tastes good. A ya. It's painful. If it's come to this, then it's not something that is difficult. And then he goes on to say, So you have nipa, which is singular, a person, right? A person, singular. The plural is nipa. Nipa. And I stretch the initial n because it's double n, right? Double n. So we have nipa as people. And then we have nipa or unipa as a person, one person. And then we have bia, which can be any or every. So if you attach bia to a noun, you'll be saying any this or every that. All right. So here we have nipe bia, any person. Right. Nipe bia here moa. Here means to need. So if I say me here, it means. I need you. And then we have moi. And moi is the noun help. The verb is bois. Bois, to help. So if I say me bois, it means I'll help you. But then if I say me moi, that means I need help. And that help is the noun version, you know, help. So we have me pe bia moi. And then you have the a ah at the end, which signals that this is if close. Okay, so we have nipebia hiamwa. If any person needs 
help essese nipa obuano and we use essese or ewose to convey have to expressions okay have to so essese meko i have to go essese woda you have to sleep okay ewose woda you have to sleep so you can use essese or ewose to convey have to expressions so you have essese nipa obuano I told you that the verb to help is boa. And that is what we have here. So you know we have nipe bie hiamua. Esese nipa obuano. If any person needs help, you have to help that person. And Judas agrees with ampa. Ampa. And ampa means true. Right? The expression true. So when someone is saying something, you think, oh, that's the truth. So you say, Ampa, ampa, that's true, that's true. Santo says, enti mebo mpaye ama. We have enti as so. Enti meko, so I'm going. Enti wo kwa So where are you going? Okay, so we have enti as so. And then there is a phrasal verb here. Bo mpaye. Bo mpaye. And like I mentioned in our previous episode, for most three phrasal verbs, we are able to combine the component words to form nouns out of them. Okay, so if we take this as an example, we have bompaye, which is the verb to pray. Now, we can put these two words together and then we get mpaibo, which is prayer, the act of praying. So, I will pray for you. We have the verb dru which means to arrive. Say you visit me and then you are going back home and then I call you later to ask if you have reached, right? You've arrived home. I'll ask you, where do you feel? Where do you feel? Have you got home? Okay. So we have ama udru osro ahimemu wa. We have osro ahimemu. Osro ahimemu. And together, this is heaven. So you should put that down. Osra himemu is heaven. But let's break it down. Osro here means up above, you know, the skies. Up, right? And then we have ahimai. Ahimai is coming from ahene mai. Ahene mai. Ahene is the plural of ohene. Ohene is a king, right? Ohene is a king. So ahene will be kings. And then we have mai, which is omai. Right? It's coming from Omai, which is country. Right? So, literally, this is like the country of kings up above. But this is like um, a kingdom up above. So, we have Amawudru Osra Hememuwa. So that when or if you get to heaven, when ya baby papa atna, why? We have nya here, which is to get. Right, the verb to get. So I can say, um, Kofi Enyesika. Kofi has gotten money. Okay, Kofi Enyesika. And then we have baby, and baby is somewhere, a place. And then we have papa, which is the adjective good. So baby papa here is a good place. That's a movie, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have when ya baby papa, so that you get a good place. Atna. Now, tna here can be to live or to sit, literally. So, in all, we have ama udru osra himemuwa. So that when or if you get to heaven, when your baby papa atna, you get a good place to live or to sit. And then he ends that with why. Now, this why is interesting. You see this written on social media as W A I. Now, this why. Is actually coming from wate. Wate, you've heard. So this is basically what we use to say, okay, okay. So like when you say something and then you're like, okay, you are checking to see if the person has heard you or agrees with what you're saying, right? But over time, we have reduced this wate to why, why, why. Okay, so when someone says something and ends that with why, you should know that he's just saying, okay, so it's not say why. Sit down, okay? Kawaii, go, okay? So Judas responds to that with mate. 
the verb here is te, which is to hear. This is a two-letter word, which means it will have several other meanings, but in this context, te means to hear. So, mate, I've heard you. The first thing to note here is that we have the statement enclosed in se and a at the end. Right? You see se in front and a at the end. And I told you this is how we convey the F clause in G. So if you see a statement enclosed in se and a, then you have an F clause. Right? So you just have to look at what the middle part means. And then you have if that. So let's see. We have se efata se ye bo manso and sawakwa. Now we said fata means to suit or to be fit or to deserve, right? So here, let's see this as to deserve. The verb bo means to hit. And then we have ma. Ma, and note that I say this with some sort of nasal effect. I say ma, ma, and this is the plural of abba, abba, and abba is a stick or a cane. So the plural is ma, which is sticks or canes. So we said bo is to hit, and we have abba as a cane. If you put these two together, you get bo abba, which means to cane, right, to cane. So, if we put bo and then ma, the plural, together, we get boma, which means to cane, but not just one cane. <laughs> we'll be caning the person, like, you know, continuously with different kinds of canes. And then we have answer. Answer means before. Mind you, before, we have different versions of before in chi. I know in English, you use the same form, before, for any kind of before. <laughs> But for us, we have different kinds of before. So here we have answer. And this answer as before is used to express, you know, something that you do before you do something else. Okay, so if I want to tell you eat before you sleep, I'll say didi answer wada. Okay, didi answer wada. Right? If I want to say um, sleep before you go to school, I'll say da answer waku school. Da answer waku school. But beyond this, there is another before that you use in English. So, for example, if I want to say that I have gone to Ghana before, right? I have gone to Ghana before. We will not use this answer because this answer is specifically for what you do before you do something else. So, if you have gone to Ghana before, it doesn't mean, you know, you are going to Ghana and then you do something else after. No, right? So that's before we use pain. Pain. So that is your adverb, right? Pain. So I will say, Mako Ghana pain. Mako Ghana pain. I have gone to Ghana before. So, you know, we have se efata se e bo manso and sawakwa. And if you deserve to be caned, before you go also, ya boma, why? You get kid, okay? I told you, uh, why? From what? You've heard, okay? Judah says, yo, okay. <laughs> right, so Santo says, si, utriase. And three here is from a tree. A tree. And a tree is the body part, the head. The short form can be three or T, just T. Okay, so if I want to say my head aches, I will say mi T yemia. Mi T yemia. My head aches. Okay. Now, if I say siwutrase, it means bow your head. Okay. So if you go to church and the pastor wants to pray with you, he would say siwutrase nayamompaye. Bow your head and let's pray. Okay? 
So this is the prayer that Santo says for Judas. Erade, we have already identified as one of the names that people refer to God with. And then we have Enyobina Ekumenchi. This whole part is coming from a very popular saying. So there's a saying that goes like Enyobina Ekumenchi. Buesi akone deni ti aje achrema. Enyobina Ekumenchi. This saying, I understand, comes from history that I don't really want to get into. But we basically use this saying when we want to say that we are responsible for our actions and inactions, right? So whatever comes to us is as a result of our own actions and inactions. Nobody else should be blamed for what befalls us. So this Enchibuesiako guy here, nobody is responsible for his death. It is he himself who got himself in trouble by putting his neck on the line. He continues and says, Ose neiri eja ninti. I told you that the verb se is to say, right? To say. And then we identified yere as wife, right? So meiri, my wife. Weiri, your wife, right? Ose neiri eja ninti. He says his wife has left him. So... Right, so jai, we said in the context of relationships, is to leave someone, to break up with someone, to divorce someone. Waba umrem ha. Now we have umrem, which is the bush, right? The bush umrem. We also have kwaye, which is forest, right? So umrem is the bush, and then we have kwaye as the forest. Waba umrem ha. He has come to this bush, right? This bush. Ah, or beshe a konfu. Ah, or beshe a konfu. I told you, she a konfu means to hang oneself, right? So, osene ire janinti, wabem remu ha, or beshe a konfu. He says his wife has left him, so he has come to this um, bush to hang himself. Ene nunko, go with him. And then on call, and then he says, "O Drew Barrier Honso na efatase mana o de bonwa." We've already identified Drew as to arrive or to get to. When he gets to the barrier, more like the gate, the gate to heaven, right? So when he gets to the gate to heaven, and he deserves to be caned by you, bonoma na unhunse esuno kwasiya. When he gets to the gates and you figure that he deserves to be caned, cane him. Let's look at kwasia and nyansafuo. Kwasia is a foolish person. Kwasia, so this, when you insult someone and you tell the person that the person is foolish, an idiot, you will say, Oye kwasia. Okay, we are kwasia. That's the insult. You are foolish. And then we have nyansa four, which is like the opposite of this. So nyansa four is a sensible person, someone who is sensible, right? Now, if you put a sono this na a sono that, you are saying there's a difference between this and then that. So here, if we say a sono kwasia na a sono nyansa four, we are saying. There's a difference between a stupid person, an idiot, and then a sensible person. Okay? So, when he gets to the gate, and then you find that he deserves to be caned, cane him so that he knows that there's a difference between a stupid person and a sensible person. Going back to this esuno, I said if you put esuno, this, na esuno, that, you are saying there's a difference between this and then that, right? So I can say esuno me na esuno wo. Okay, esuno me na esuno wo. So let's say I'm doing something and then you say, ah, why would you do that? You know, you are questioning why any sane person would do this. 
and then I reply you with, well, esunome na esunwo. It means we are different people. There's a difference between me and then you. So you can't question my process. Why? 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 So now we know Erade is God, right? The verb here is Shia, and Shia means to meet. So Erade is God has met you. Why? Okay? And then Judah says, You. So Santo says, Inti ubewu asum GM. I told you Inti is so, right? And then I told you that the verb wu means to die. Now, we said if you put re in front of a chief verb, you get the progressive form of that verb, as in the ing version of that verb. Okay? So if I say kofi wu, that would be kofi is dying, right? Because of the re in front of the wu. But to situate a verb in the future, so the future tense, we put be in front of that verb. You should make time and check out our lessons on tenses. It's very, very important. But this is just to, you know, give you an idea of what is happening here. So if you put be in front of a chief verb, then you situate that verb in the future. So when I said kofi wu, as kofi is dying, if I say kofi bewu, kofi bewu, that will be kofi will die. So here we have enti ubewu asumjiem. So you will die. You see the be, right? See the be. So enti ubewu. So you will die. And then we have asumjiem. This is coming from asumjie. Mu, asumjie mu. Asumjie is peace, right? Peace. And we have mu, which is in, right? In. So asumjie will be in peace. So overall, we have enti ubewu asumjie mu. So you will die in peace. And then Judas goes back to his earlier question. He says, Na atadieno udeko. We identified in our previous. Um, episode that atadie is shirt, right, or dress. So he's asking, na atadie no de ko. So the shirt, are you taking it away? Are you taking it with you? Fatadie no mami, give me the shirt. Huh? Oh, huh? na We my wife trusts me, so I'm crucifying myself. Nobody kills. You. You. We end today's episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, you'll find the full transcript of this clip along with the full English translation on our website, learnaccount.com. You should check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. It's bye for now.